Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 12th of September. Rajnath Singh hits out at Rahul Gandhi for his remarks on China baseless. Two killed in attack on Pakistani polio vaccination team. And Australia to strip medals from veterans after alleged war crimes. And now for all the details. The ruling part which of the party has trained guns at leader of opposition in Lok Sabha, Rahul Gandhi. After he turned as Prime Minister Narendra Modi's government's handling of crisis with China a disaster. Speaking at an event in Washington, D.C., Gandhi made a huge claim of occupation of land in Ladakh by the Chinese, alleging that their forces have occupied land the size of capital Delhi. Hitting out at these remarks, Defence Minister Rajnath Singh said, Gandhi's comments are beyond facts. In a post on X, Singh dismissed the claims and said the Gandhi sign during his foreign tours is making comments which are misleading, baseless and not factual. It is extremely shameful and hurts the dignity of India, he added. Rahul has opened a shop of lies and should refrain from making such false statements, he added. Union Minister and MP from Border State Arunachal Pradesh, Kiran Rijiju also lashed at out Gandhi and said he is not ashamed of ridiculing own country. Several lawmakers and leaders of Pakistan's jailed former Prime Minister Imran Khan's PDI party arrested after a rally that they held to demand his release have been charged with terrorism offences, according to police. The lawmakers have been in police custody since being arrested after Sunday's rally turned violent and will remain in custody until September 18 for investigation. Imran Khan has been in jail for over a year since his ouster in 2022 after a falling out with powerful military generals which has spawned the worst political turmoil in decades. Chief Minister of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, Ali Amin Gandapur, where Khan's party leads a majority government, is among those facing the charges. An Islamabad police spokesman said the charges included law and order violations and attacking law enforcement officials, which constitutes a terrorism offence. Khan's PDI party has said nearly a dozen of its parliamentarians have been picked up in Islamabad. The party has announced country-wide protests for Friday against the crackdown. Gunmen opened fire on a polio vaccination team in Pakistan's Bajor tribal district on Wednesday, killing one of those handing out doses and one policeman escorting him. The Tehreek-e Taliban Pakistan claimed the attack in a statement but mentioned no reason. Previously, Islamist militant groups in the region bordering Afghanistan have claimed similar attacks on polio teams, falsely portraying the inoculation campaigns as a Western conspiracy to sterilize children. Pakistan began its latest national campaign earlier this week, aiming to administer the vaccine to up to 30 million children. Pakistan and Afghanistan are the only two countries in the world still struggling to eradicate polio. Reportedly, policemen in Bajor have called for boycott of security duties for the vaccination campaign following the killings of their colleagues. Australia will strip military awards from a group of war veterans over allegations those under their command committed war crimes in Afghanistan, Defence Minister Richard Marles said on Thursday. A four-year inquiry chaired by Major General Paul Berriton concluded in 2020 that there was credible information of the alleged unlawful killings of 39 people by or involving 25 Australian Defence Force members as part of a culture of forcing junior recruits to kill defenceless captives to blood them for combat. As part of delivering the final recommendations of the inquiry known as the Brereton Report, 
Miles had written to several officers who served in Afghanistan to inform them that the medals awarded for service would be withdrawn. The government has not named the officers who will lose awards or how many will be impacted. A former soldier was charged with war crimes last year. My decisions on this matter are consistent with the findings and recommendations of the Brereton Report in accordance with obligations owed to the individuals involved, including under the Privacy Act, I am prohibited from disclosing the details and outcomes. This will always be a matter of national shame. At the same time, the Brereton Report, its recommendations and the actions of successive governments in implementing these recommendations are a demonstration to the Australian people and to the world that Australia is a country which holds itself accountable. Australia participated in a NATO-led international force that trained Afghan security forces and fought the Taliban for two decades following the removal of the Islamist militants from power in 2001. More than 39,000 Australian troops served in Afghanistan and 41 were killed. Bangladesh Chief Advisor Mohammad Yudis said on Wednesday that the country wants good relations with India and other neighbouring countries. In his first televised address since assuming charge as the head of the interim government, Yunus said while Dhaka wants good relations with India and other neighbouring nations, but those relations should be based on the basis of fairness and equality. He added with India, his government has already started discussions on high-level bilateral cooperation in dealing with floods. He said he had telephonic conversation with Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Pakistan's Shabash Sharif following his oath and added that in order to enhance regional cooperation in South Asia, he has also taken initiative to revive the SAR grouping of nations which has been suspended due to frozen ties between India and Pakistan. This is the second time Yunus has spoken about relations with India. Earlier this month, in a similar comment, the chief advisor had said if New Delhi wants good relations with Dhaka, it needs to come out of narrative that Bangladesh is in safe hands only when Sheikh Hasina is in power. The political deadlock over the deputy speaker Indira Rana has continued in Nepal as the largest political party. The Nepali Congress has said either Rana should resign or face impeachment. During the meeting of party bearers, we agreed the deputy speaker tender resignation on her own or we would move constitutionally. Nepali Congress spokesperson Meen Bahadur Bishwakarma was quoted as saying by the Himalayan Times. He added Rana's actions were inappropriate and if she does not leave the office, Nepali Congress will be forced to take robust action. Rana, a member of Rashtriya Swatantra Party, has been embroiled in controversy after it was revealed that she contacted the U.S. Embassy in Kathmandu for visa for six individuals unrelated to her official role. While the RSP has defended their leader, the ruling coalition of Nepali Congress and CPN UML has said it was inappropriate for the deputy speaker to involve a foreign mission. They have asked their leaders to remain in Kathmandu as they gather two-third majority for impeachment motion. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.